I showed up at a foreclosure house and got a shotgun pulled on me. What the f What's up guys, Steve at Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, real estate brokers, and small business owners change their businesses for the better with a path toward financial freedom. That's right guys, it was 2009, I believe, and uh, our market was a little bit shaky. That's when everything pretty much crashed and um, we were on the phones cold calling different asset management companies trying to get their REO listings, foreclosure listings. And uh, we were fortunate enough to get, uh, get one uh, called uh, Brighton and uh, they issued uh, uh, assets to us to list and sell. And uh, if you guys want to learn more about that, I actually have another clip for you. So go ahead and check that out as well on listing REO properties. Anyway, when you get an REO listing assigned to you, the first thing that you have to do is go ahead and do an initial inspection. This requires you going out to the property and uh, reporting back to the bank or the asset management company to see and, and let them know if the property has been uh, or if it's occupied, if it's not occupied, the condition, overall condition of the property. Many times this can be a little dangerous because you're kind of creeping around the property, you're peeking in windows, um, trying not to startle anybody because the first initial inspection usually is just reporting back. Anyway, I go out to this property and uh, there's no car in the driveway. It does look like somebody's living there, so I'm kind of creeping around and um, I did peek in one of the uh, windows and found out that uh, sure enough there's somebody living there, there's furniture and um, I reported back to the asset management company and then the next thing is going ahead and approaching whoever's living there by uh, knocking on the door. So I knocked on the door, waited about 15 seconds uh, standing at the door and I look over at the window over on the left hand side and the, uh, the drapes were moving a little bit. So I knew somebody was definitely um, at the property, in, in the property. So um, at that point in time, I didn't want to be too aggressive and that's not my job is to uh, pound on the door in any sense. So uh, I waited a little bit longer. I knocked on the door one more time. Usually if they don't answer the door, I have a prepared note that um, I put on their door and it basically just explains who I am and what I'm, uh, what I'm there for and what I can do for them essentially. So after the second knock, I waited another 15 seconds, didn't get any response. So I started walking back to the car uh, to get the note as well as the um, uh, you know piece of tape to put it up on the door. And I'm taking a couple steps and all of a sudden I hear the door open really fast. And uh, I turn around and uh, I see this guy, he's disgruntled, he's real pissed off and said, what the f*** do you want? So I looked down and the guy had a shotgun next to him. And um, he didn't have it pointed at me, thankfully, but he had it pointed at the ground and he was wondering what the hell I was doing at that property. Now, if you've ever experienced anything dangerous in real estate, I'd definitely like to hear about in the comments below. So I fumbled my words, but I got my stuff together pretty quickly. I just said, listen, listen man, I'm not with the bank. I'm a real estate agent and I'm here to let you know that I can set you up where I can actually get cash in your pocket to move out because if I don't do this, if I don't work this out with you right now, the bank's gonna come and they're just gonna hire somebody to evict you. And they're gonna show up with a sheriff and you're not gonna get anything. So if you want money, I'm, I'm your guy to help you out. He got silent for like 10 seconds and I swear it felt like it was like three days. I'm just waiting for this dude's response. Like, is he still gonna be pissed? Is he gonna pull this thing and point it at me? I had no idea at that point in time. He finally says, what are you talking about? And, and his whole demeanor kind of shifted and went down. And then I got to explain more in detail. Look, you know, the banks, the bank already foreclosed on you. I'm not sure if you're the owner, the tenant or whatever, but they're going to come here and they're going to evict you. And, um, you know, one way around that is if you provide this property in, in its as is condition, give me the keys in two or three weeks, I can actually show back up at that point in time, give you cash for, for your for your inconveniences. He said, give me a minute, and he closed the door on me. At that point, I really didn't know what to do, so I took a couple more steps back. I wanted to kind of get out of the way this way. I could just take off running if, if need be, and um, that was my only choice at that point in time. He ended up opening the door. He didn't have the shotgun, um, thankfully, and um, you know, it turns out he was a pretty nice guy and I joked about it with him too. I was like, man, you, you know, I might have to use your bathroom because I, I think I might.
hurt myself a little bit. Everything worked out. I showed back up a few weeks later. I was able to give him, I think, about 2,000 bucks. He gave me the keys. We walked the property. Everything was as, as his condition. He didn't damage the property in any sense. So uh, it worked out really well. So there's a couple reasons why the banks will do this as well. Um, you know, it, it definitely saves some costs and, and there's certain liability associated with it. So, you know, if we have a disgruntled uh, owner and he knows he's gonna get evicted and, you know, they're gonna set up uh, seven day notices and so forth on their doors, they, they might have a reason to destroy the property. They could break windows. They could just leave the, the property filthy. So a lot of times the banks will incentivize whoever's living there just to have a clean sweep and uh, providing the property in a, a better condition than if they were to get it in a vacant or distressed, truly distressed situation. Uh, two important things that I learned. Um, number one was to protect myself. Uh, I now carry a firearm in terms of going and looking at any kind of foreclosure properties for investment wise. Um, but you know, you, you just never know. I mean, our world is becoming more and more crazy. And uh, so now I carry a, a little 380, especially in situations where I know it's gonna be uh, maybe a more rough area or more of a high crime area. So uh, I'm better protected at this point in time uh, from, from this situation. And um, also, um, I encourage you if you actually do take uh, REO listings to bring somebody else. You can hire security guards as well. Um, but you wanna always have somebody else and that's something I didn't have. I just showed up by myself. And, um, you know, needless to say, if I had somebody else there, it, I would have felt better probably. At the time, I got kind of fed up working with the banks. They had a lot of strict guidelines. And uh, I put more of my efforts and energies into um, uh, going after uh, short sale clients and helping them avoid foreclosure. So um, we actually set up a course for this. You guys can check out the link below. But bottom line to conclude, be safe out there, especially, I mean, um, you know, in open houses, you guys put it all over Facebook. Hey, I'm at this open house, here's the address. You never know who's watching that kind of stuff. So partner up because there is a lot of crazy. Hey, if you like shotguns, like this video. Um, also subscribe, I have more videos coming at you every week with personal stories, uh, a lot of mistakes I've made over the past and how you guys can learn from them. So go ahead and subscribe. And also check out those links below.